Hello guys and welcome back to the Simply Code programming channel. This is Vikesh and let's get started with today's topic which is about walking through a particular project using all the concepts which we have learned so far. So in this session we are going to focus on a particular project and the project we are going to focus is, is about an ATM application. So you might have interacted with different ATM stores in your cities where you go in, you insert your card, you enter your PIN, and then you can view the balance, you can withdraw some amount, you can also deposit some amount from the ATM. So we will try to look at it from that perspective and, and we will see what kind of different uh, Java and OOPS concepts we can use to build such ATM application. This is not a super versatile application, but, th but this is just to give you the idea of how to use those OOPS concepts to build a simple or a complex Java application. So let's start from the options menu class because that will give us the understanding of what kind of functionality I'm using. And here you will use that I am using different concepts which I which I have taught you so far in this particular series. So for example, we are using the IO exception, we are using the hash map class, we are also using a scanner class which is used to take input from the command line. So this option menu class is extending the account class and I will come to the account class in a while, but let's see what this option menu class is doing. This particular class has a, uh, it is using a decimal format money format class, which is to denote what kind of format of money you have. Then we have a hash map, which is storing a couple of uh, records of account number to pin mapping. So we create a an map and inside the get login method, we add a couple of entries to the map. Here, the first entry, the first integer is pointing to the customer number. And the second integer is pointing to the pin of the account of this particular customer number. So if we call the get login method, this method will insert the data. After that, it will ask the customer to enter the customer number, which has to be one of these two. If you provide any other value, then there should be a logic in the application to reject the input. So whatever in a customer number the customer inputs, we pass that inside this particular method called set customer number. Again, I will come back to that. And once we have provided a valid customer number, then this method is going to ask you to enter a pin number. And remember, I told you this is the customer number to the pin number mapping. So whatever customer number you select from here, you will be providing the corresponding pin number. And again, if you provide an invalid pin number, you will get an error. So that will all happen inside this try block. And if you enter any invalid characters in the pin number or the ATM uh, customer number, then you will get an exception, which I am writing inside the catch block. This is all what we have seen so far. After the successful enter of the customer number and the pin number, I fetch those values from these two methods. Again, I will talk about what these methods are doing. And again, I'm doing some basic validation checks, but things get interesting in this method. So what we covered so far was the get login method. Let me close this method here. So we covered the get login method. The second method, which is defined in this particular class is the account type. So here the, we will ask the, once the customer has provided the customer number and the pin number, we will ask the customer to provide the account type. This application supports two different account types, which are checking account or a savings account. So whatever, so the customer has to choose one of them. Again, we will be taking the input from the command line using the scanner class. And then I'm using a switch case. If the customer entered one, then I will execute some code for the checking account, which is defined here in the case one. And if the customer entered two, then the case two will be executed. And if the, if it enters three, then I will exit the application by just printing a sys out. So here I'm using the switch case construct to provide different options to the customer. There's also a default case specified here, which says invalid choice. So this is what is happening in the get account type method. The next method is if the customer has used the option one, then we call the get checking method. So let's go to the get checking method, which is the next method, which is defined in this particular class. So if the customer has selected a checking account, then we provide the following functionality to the customer, which is the customer can view the balance, customer can withdraw the funds, customer can deposit the funds to the checking account, or they can just exit the application. And again, I'm using a switch case here based on the customer types one, two, three, or four, the corresponding case block will be executed. For example, if the customer wants to view the balance, then this block will get executed. And I call the get account type method. If the customer selects the two as the withdraw fund, then get checkings with withdraw input method gets called and then get account type gets called. 
Similarly, if the customer enters three, then we deposit the fund. And for that also, I have defined a method. I will go to the definition of these methods as we go along. But right now we are just building the framework. So the get checking deposit input method will be called to whenever the customer selects the option three. And for option four, we just exit the application. So this is what is happening in the get checking method. Now, if from the account selection, if the customer selected second option, which was savings account, then we were calling get saving method. So this is where the get saving method is defined. And again, it is following the exact same format as we saw in the get checking method where we pre present the following options like viewing balance, withdrawing the funds and depositing the funds in the savings account. And I have some methods defined here. For example, get saving withdraw input, get saving deposit input. So we define the switch case here based on the customer's choices here. And that is what is happening in the get saving method. So let me close this method as well. And that's all what is defined inside the option menu class. So we ask the customer to enter the customer number, the pin number from this get login method. Then based on that, we provide the customer the options to choose the account type, whether they can choose the savings account or the checking account. And based on that, whatever account type they use, we call the get checking or get saving method. And inside this method, we provide the customer the other options to either withdraw the money, deposit the money or view the balance. That is what is happening inside this option menu class. Now let's go to the account class and all the methods which we saw here will be provided a definition in the account class. You also see this option menu is extending the accounts class. So an inheritance concept is being used here. Let's go to the account class now. So this is the account class where I have defined some private member variables like customer number. So now you will be familiar with the customer number pin number, which I just described and also with the checking balance and the savings balance. You can also divide this account class into two child classes where you have a savings account class and a checking account class. But for simplicity, I've kept it to one class. I'm initializing a scanner input which will be used at multiple places. And then I have the setters and getters for these four member variables. So you see set customer number, get customer number. If you remember this set customer number was called in the option menu class. If I go back to the get login, once we ask the customer to enter the customer number, we call the set customer number which gets called here. Similarly, we call the set pin number which gets called here. Similarly, once we have said that we then we were fetching the values using the get customer number and the get pin number and that is that is also defined here in terms of the getters get pin number and get customer number. Similarly, we also have the getters for the checking balance and the saving balance member variables. We do not have the setters for them because they are not technically setters, but we have to calculate the balance. It's not a simple setter where you can just return the value. So now let's look at some of the business functions of the account class. How do you deposit? How do you view the balance? How do you withdraw the balance, etc.? So you see these two methods which are specifically when the customer is trying to withdraw the money from their account. And these methods are basically called internally by other methods. So we will come to that. Let's see that. Let's just understand that we have two methods for calculating the withdrawable amount or executing the withdraw transaction for the checking account account and the savings account. Similarly, I have two more methods here which are calculating the depositing for the checking account and calculating the depositing for the savings account. And then we get the, the bigger methods which are using these calculation methods. So I defined four calculation methods so far. Calc checking withdraw, calc saving withdraw, calc checking deposit and calc saving deposit. Basically withdrawing and deposit for both of the classes. And then we have these business functions called get checking withdraw input and get saving withdraw input get checking deposit input and get saving deposit input. So these getter methods are something which were being called from the option menu class. If you remember, if you go back to the option menu class and if you chose the checking account, you get these options. And let's say you chose option two, which was withdraw funds or option three, which was deposit funds. Then the corresponding methods which were being called were get checking withdraw input and get checking deposit input. And this is the exact same method get checking withdraw input and get checking deposit input. So if you see what is happening inside this particular method is a couple of sysouts. Then we take the scanner input amount and we, we convert that amount to the double. After that, we check if the amount which the customer wants to withdraw is smaller than the checking balance or not. And I'm running this condition to check that if the amount is smaller than the checking balance, 
Then we call the calc checking withdraw method, which was defined right here. Remember I told you that these four calc methods will be used and this is how they are used. So here I'm actually subtracting the value. So whatever amount the customer wants to withdraw, subtract that from the main balance and then return the new main balance. That's what you do, right? If you have thousand rupees and if you want to withdraw 500, you subtract 500 from thousand and then you send back the remaining balance. So that is what is happening when we call this method and then we print the new checking account balance. That is what is happening in the get checking withdraw input method. Similarly, if you chose option three, which was depositing funds to the checking account, then get checking deposit input gets called and it is defined right here, get checking deposit input. And here, instead of subtraction, we are doing the addition. So here I'm again doing a condition check that the current balance plus the new amount, which has been supplied by the customer from the command line, the total sum of it should be greater than zero. What if the customer entered a, an amount minus 5,000? I should not allow that. So that's the reason I'm putting this condition in place. And if the current balance plus the new amount, which is supposed to be deposited to the account, the sum of it is greater than zero, then call the calc checking deposit method. And this is where the calc checking deposit method is present and where I'm just doing present balance plus the new amount and returning the new balance. That's all which is being done here. And you will see exactly similar logic running for the savings account as well. If you look at the get saving withdraw input, which is used to withdraw money from the savings account. So I take the input from the command line and I run a condition check that the amount which the customer wants to withdraw should be less than the current saving accounts balance. If yes, then call calc saving saving withdraw method which is defined here where I subtract the amount from the current balance and I return the new balance. And similarly, you will see the exact same functionality in the get saving deposit where we add the money instead of subtracting the money. And this is all what is defined in the account class. So we talked about the option menu class. We talked about the account class and now we have the ATM class, which is the entry point, which basically initializes the option menu class and calls the get login method. Remember get login was the first method which asked you to provide the customer number and then get login called the method to choose the account type and the account type methods then called the method to choose the option to withdraw deposit or exit. So now we have built a fair understanding of what is happening in this application. So let's run this application. So I just ran this application and let me bring the console here. It's first asking for a customer number. So I will go to the option menu class and I will pick up one of the customer number which I have hard coded here. So I will provide that customer number and hit enter. Then it asks me for the pin number. So remember you have to provide the correct pin number corresponding to the customer number. So I'm taking this pin number, just copying it and pasting it here. Then this whole code got executed and then it called the get account type and the get account type method provided you with these options, which you see here on the screen. So based on what you select, the case block will get executed. And let's say I want to go for a checking account. So I press one and I hit enter. Once you select the checking account, the case one gets selected and it calls the get checking method and the get checking method again provides you with another menu to withdraw view view withdraw or deposit or exit so let's say i want to deposit funds so i press three and hit enter it says the current balance is zero and enter the amount you want to deposit let's say i want to deposit 500 and i hit enter you get the message saying the new checking account balance is 500 and you have successfully deposited the money and that is what i did for the checking account now let's try to withdraw something from the checking account so you again get back the same option because inside the get checking method we call the once we have successfully done the business operation we again call the account type uh, method to display the menu again to the user so let's say again select the checking account class and this time I want to withdraw the funds. Remember I've added 500 there. So let's say I want to withdraw. So I choose the option two as the choice. Current balance is 500 and it's asking me the amount you want to withdraw from the checking account. So I enter, let's say 100 and I hit enter. When I do that, the new checking account balance becomes 400. So the 100 got subtracted from the 500 and the new balance is shown to your screen. You can do exactly the same thing for, for the savings account as well. And let's also run a negative condition. So I again select the checking account and I want to withdraw the funds. So I, cho I choose the option two. Current balance is 400 and I, I would like to withdraw 1000. What happens? 
If you do that, we get a message saying balance cannot be negative. And this is coming from the calc checking method, which, which is defined here. So what is happening that I want you to withdraw the funds from the checking account and here get checking withdraw input dot called here. This condition was checked. So the checking balance was 400 and the amount I wanted to withdraw was 1000. So 400 minus 1000 is not greater than or equal to zero. So it jumped into the else block and it said balance cannot be negative. So this is how you can also build some error conditions in your code, which are mandatory and which should be built. Otherwise your application will have a lot of bugs. We can also exit the application. So if you just type three and hit enter, you will exit from the application and it will come in. It will again call the login method where it will again ask you to enter the customer number. So this is how you can run this application. And this is this was a simple use case for you to show how you can use the different object oriented concepts like classes, objects, methods, setters, getters, switch case, etc. to build the application with the correct business logic. And this is all I want to cover in this particular session. And in the next session, we are going to have a look at another interesting core Java project just to build our understanding more better about the core Java concept. And if you like this video, a thumbs up would be massively appreciated. And please don't forget to subscribe to Simply Code for more programming related videos. Thank you and we'll meet again in the next session.